in this place. And in Jesus' name we pray that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Eric. Thank you so much. And as a part of our theme with renewal or renew all things, each week we're going to highlight a ministry opportunity for people to be involved in. You may find that, oh, I, I really can't do anything like that. Well, we're asking you to pray for that ministry then. And if you might be drawn to, to have some questions about, well, well, maybe I could do that, do sign up. Each week we'll be highlighting a different area of ministry because we really sense that God is desiring to renew how we do all things here so that we might reach people effectively. And a part of that is that people would discover ways that God has wired them to do ministry so that they experience the joy of taking part in that. And uh, today, as we talk about renewing all things this past fall, this fall, this past fall, uh, yeah, I, I get done with one football weekend, and I'm thinking this past fall. <laughs> Took Michigan all of three quarters to finally get started yesterday, and then they won. But that's uh, not what we're here to talk about. We're talking about God renewing all things. And kind of the overarching verse for this is the Second Corinthians chapter 4, where it talks about how we, or in our world, we are inwardly Waste, outwardly wasting away, but inwardly we are being renewed day by day by God so that even our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. God is in the renewal business, and he is renewing us by his grace, strengthening us and filling us with his peace and giving us his love, pouring that into our hearts so that we might pour that into this world. This week we're looking at renew our strength. And one thing is you hear that word renew all or renewal. I want you to be thinking anytime you come across something in your daily life where there's a renewal, maybe there's a renewal for a magazine, Maybe there's an email that comes that says, this has been renewed, uh, and now you're paying for it again. I discovered something that was on a bill that for 41 months has been charged, and uh, that was being paid for by my homeowners association fees. And so I contacted that vendor and said, I think I might need you to unrenew this at least to refund the money. Renew all things. And today we look at renewing our strength. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 6, where the Apostle Paul is finishing up what he is saying to that church in Ephesus. And this letter then would be taken from Ephesus and shared with other churches in the region. And as he's concluding what he's saying, he begins this in verse 10 by saying, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. And so our theme today is renew our strength, that we ask the Lord to renew our strength in him. And it is not our strength per se. It is not that we do things to build ourselves up, but it is rather that God gives us the tools to build up our strength, spiritual tools like reading Scripture, like prayer, like Holy Communion and baptism, remembering our connection with Christ that took place there, receiving Christ as He comes to us in His body and blood to strengthen us, to strengthen our faith. And the Apostle Paul in this verse 10 of Ephesians 6, he says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. This is about the Lord's strength, about the Lord's power. And so as we're talking about renew our strength, we're going to take a look at these 10 verses here. And I want you to be thinking about the why, for what purpose, or to what end. Sometimes people will say, I think it was author Simon Sinek who said, begin with the why. And so begin with the why. Why is God telling us that he wants our strength 
to be renewed. For what purpose and to what end? And listen, I like listening for keywords, things that writers like Paul emphasize by repeating. So listen for the key words here. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. That's twice he said that about the full, mar- full armor of God. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, the breastplate of righteousness in place, your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, and the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Well, obviously, a key word here is for us to stand. But why? Why do we need this strength? Why do we need to stand? It is because, as the Apostle Paul points out, we're in the middle of a battleground. Picture that someone has taken you lifted you up and dropped you right into the middle of the battlefield with shells exploding on every side. And that is where we are. Although we do not see this with our eyes necessarily, for this is a spiritual battlefield. And so we have an enemy. And that enemy is real. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Take your stand against the devil's schemes. Our struggle is against all the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. You and I, we have an adversary who is seeking to take us out. Why do we need to stand? What does that signal for us? That our enemy is going to throw whatever he's got at us. Why? Because we are the Lord's. And that the Lord has the victory and the power. But the evil one still wants to get his pound of flesh, if you want to put it that way. And so he takes his shots at us. The tools of the enemy often are things like discouragement or doubt or despair. And those things sometimes get hooked up around with our own sense of guilt and shame to try and weigh us down and pull us down. But that is not where God wants us to be. And so the Apostle Paul, in speaking to the Ephesians, he reminds them, you are in the middle of this spiritual battlefield You have an enemy who, yes, is out to take his shots at you. But you have been given this armor, the armor of God, because the one who is victorious is your Savior. And so we could talk a whole different sermon about each of these different types of armor that is listed here, which would have been very familiar to the people in Ephesus, a Roman colony, where they would see what the soldiers would normally wear. One thing to know, none of this armor covers your back. Someone has said that is because God has your six. He has your backside covered. Well, if Jesus has won the victory, why should we worry? No, we don't worry about what the devil has because ultimately Christ is our protector. He is our victor. He has given us victory. We are super victorious, St. Paul would write as he would write to the Romans. 
then why know all this? Because when these things come at us, the discouragement, the doubt, and the despair that tries to take our focus off of what God has done and is doing in our lives and in our world and seeks to draw our attention to the things that pull us down. God wants us to recognize those things for what they are. Ultimately, an attack of the evil one. Sometimes I like to think of it this way. Sometimes some of those things, the discouragement or the doubt or despair, kind of finds its way into our lives or into our situation through someone else or some other system in our world. It is not that those things or those people necessarily are evil. But sometimes they and us can quite unwittingly be used by the evil one as a tool correct? And that is why we confess our own sins as we confess those sins also forgiving those who have sinned against us. We recognize that God desires to protect us and he desires that we would be able then to make our stand, to stand firm. So standing in Christ and his power is a part of the objective that God has for us as we are those in service to his kingdom. And the tools that he's given us to protect us, that full armor of God, and even the offensive tool, not just defensive, but offense, the sword of the Spirit, the word of God. And then I read what Paul says next, and I find it fascinating how Paul speaks about his own struggle, his own challenges, and the need that we have, and the tool that we have in the power of the Spirit. He talks about praying. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Pray in the Spirit with prayers and requests. Keep this in mind. Be alert and keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Five times he talks about prayer. In fact, that, that supersedes the use of any other word that he has that the Apostle Paul writes in this section. Prayer is key. Praying in the Spirit, always, all occasions, prayers and requests, praying for all the Lord's people. But what really catches my attention is the way that the Apostle Paul who, if there's anyone in Scripture I kind of put on a pedestal, other than Jesus, of course. Jesus, he's my God. But I look at the Apostle Paul, who wrote the majority of the New Testament, who endured so much. He speaks about how he is a prisoner for the sake of the gospel here. What prayer does he ask for? Pray that whenever I speak, I'll get the words from God and pray that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. And then he says it again, pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Have you ever been afraid just to share your faith? Or to, to really just let it be known. And you don't have to be weird in the way that you share your faith. It's just simply being genuine. And especially if we are people of prayer, praying for all types of situations, what we bring to the table as we go into this world, what we bring to the table as we interact with each other here in this church is this trust in the Lord who rules over all things, who reigns in power and grace and who has given us prayer as a tool so that we might help people who are experiencing the defeat, the despair, the doubt, 
and the discouragement that comes from the evil one so that they might have that wiped away by the Lord so that they might experience the victory and the peace and the hope and the joy that Christ desires to bring. And how do we do that? Well, you and I don't have the power to do any of that, although we can encourage people, and that's substantial. But if you really want people to be connected with Christ and all that he brings, the tool that God's given us in our toolbox is prayer. That's why I teach people all the time. Someone remembered this this week and said this, and I thought, oh, then it's good if people are remembering this. This four-word prayer. Dear God, help so-and-so. When we pray that for people, when we pray that for each other, when we meet someone who is new coming into the house of the Lord here, Prince of Peace, Prince of Peta Paz, when we meet someone out in this world and we identify that they are experiencing discouragement, doubt, or despair, the tools of the evil one at work, and we simply say, could I pray for you? Would I know it's weird. Would I, could I pray for you right now? Dear God, help so-and-so. If God answers that prayer, and God desires to answer our prayers, he will make himself known to that person. And they will experience his peace and his power. And so pray. You are no stronger and no weaker than the Apostle Paul who asked for prayers that he would be able to declare God's will and God's love fearlessly. And so we pray. We pray that God would give us opportunities. We pray that God would strengthen us with his mighty power, renewing our strength. And we pray that not only we, but all people might have an opportunity to see God at work, to see Jesus with his victory as he brings his peace, his love, and his joy into the lives of others. In Jesus' name, amen. Please rise as together we sing.